Hello, my name is Rocket, and welcome to episode one of my Pokemon Red Hardcore Nuzlocke. So, welcome back to another Nuzlocke. Today, we're going to be starting a Generation 1 Hardcore Nuzlocke with Pokemon Red. Now, I'm pretty excited for this one because this is going to be my first time ever playing through a Generation 1 game. Yeah, I'm not that old. So, uh... <laughs> I'm pretty excited. I'm I'm I usually usually the reason I kept playing a generation one game for so long was mostly the graphics, I'll say. It just you know, but honestly they don't look that bad from uh first right like right now. They they look okay. But uh mostly because of that, but I'm pretty excited for a Gen 1 hardcore Nuzlocke. I took a look at like um a few of the um, of the mechanics of Gen 1, and they're pretty broken and goofy, and I think that's going to be making a very fun Nuzlocke as well, because I'm just going to be trying to to not do really stupid stuff and uh, still trying, uh, you know, to go through those broken mechanics that we have in this in this really really beautiful game and see what happens really. Um, so for the rules of this Nuzlocke, so we're going to be using the standard the standard rules that we usually use. So. Um, we can only catch the first Pokémon of each new location. When a Pokémon faints, it is considered dead and cannot be used for the rest of the run. We're going to be um, we're going we're going to be playing on set mode. There's going to be no items in battle. We are going to we're going to have level caps for the gym leader lead four. I completely forgot about the rules. Uh, in gym battles, we're going to be using the same amount of Pokémon as the enemy gym leader. So imagine this is something that usually happens in the anime, and I really like. So imagine I'm going to be facing Brock. Brock has only two Pokemon, so we're only allowed to bring two Pokemon ourselves, and I think that's a pretty cool rule. And basically, finally, we're just going to try to fight as many trainers as we can um, to make a stand, to make sure that we are the best. So yeah, those are pretty much going to be the rules. I'm pretty excited. We have Professor Oak over here. Uh, you know, we've seen this dialogue a thousand times. I'm just going to go a little bit quicker through these parts, and I just want to have a little bit of fun later. So we'll go with Dan. And our opponent, our rival, I'll just go Gary, I like Gary. Alright, with that, <laughs> look at the graphics, I'm green! Oh, that's so cool. Gen 1 game. There's also a few things I want to talk about in Gen 1, but uh, I'll do that a little bit later. For now, let's go ahead and go downstairs and go talk to Professor Oak. Oh man, look at the graphics. This is so cool. I can't believe this game. How long is- how old is this game? Well, it has a few years on it, right? It's older than me. But, oh man, this is- this is gonna be cool. So, um, usually- alright, going back into Nuzlocke mode, I guess. Usually, when we pick our starter for a Nuzlocke, um, I pick- I pick a starter depending on the last number of our trainer ID. And our trainer ID usually is on our trainer card, but I don't really know when the trainer card was introduced, I'm not really sure if it was Generation 2 or 3, but in Gen 1, there is no trainer card. We just have this, like, a little thing, um, with our name on it. It has- to, it tells you how much money we have and then how much time we have played. Even how many badges, and oh, that's actually really cool, they have a, a question mark for Giovanni. Whoa, that's actually really nice. They thought of a really- they thought, of, they thought of a lot of stuff for Gen 1. Wow, I'm actually pretty impressed. Um, so instead, we're going to be picking our starter, and I'm going to go, be going with Charmander for two reasons. The first one is obviously, this is Pokemon Red, so picking Charmander, this kind of feels right, right? And the second reason is that uh, Charmander is probably the worst starter, um, because it just is. It's not good against uh, Brock, it's not good against Misty, and honestly, for the rest of the game, it isn't that useful. And, um, yeah. Uh, we're gonna be naming this Zippo, and there doesn't seem to be lowercase letters, which is totally fine. We'll go with Zippo. Alright. Oh, there was a lowercase! I saw it! I saw something about a lowercase! Oh, I, I probably saw it a little bit too late. That's fine. Our opponent gets Squirrel. Now, I want to talk about a few of the really cool things I learned about Gen 1, because I did a little bit of research on it. Um... So our stats are actually a little bit different than what we're used to. In Gen 1 we have our HP, which is currently 20, we have 11 attack, 9 defense, 12 speed, and 10 special. And on special we actually have both the special attack and special defense that uh, we're used to having. So they are basically combined in one stat, which makes a few Pokémon really, really broken. And I'm guessing it probably makes some other Pokémon worse, but, you know, that doesn't really matter too much. 
uh, some moves and and things are really broken. But something I want to talk about first is the uh, is that uh, on Generation One, we don't have the usual IVs or Pokemon natures. We don't have any Pokemon natures and abilities that we're used to, right? We we don't have any abilities or natures, which is something. You know, Nuzlockers usually take into account. So, my first uh, idea was that, right, if there's no abilities and there are no natures, then I'm guessing there's no IV and EV system, which would make sense. It's, it's a Generation 1 game. But I was completely blown away and surprised and wrong when I actually found out that Generation 1 does have an IV and EV system. So, they, they, def they, they have a different system, but it's still an IV and EV system. So, instead of the individual values that we're used to that have between 1 and 31, there's something called the determinant values, and they go through 1 to 15, which is, which I thought was really cool. There's some way to determine that, but uh, it was a lot, uh, a lot of uh, stuff. I'll, uh, I'm gonna probably be linking a lot of, in the description, a lot of the things I'm gonna be talking about now, because I thought they were pretty cool. Um, I'm just gonna give you, like, the basics of the basics, but just in case you're more curious, there's a few videos and a few Bulbapedia pages that have very, very good information that uh, I did some research on, and I, some research some research on and I found really really cool so there there is our trainer ID so four six three eight one so if you would have known this sooner we would have picked a Bulbasaur which is probably the best star um, because he has sleep powder and sleep powder is broken in this game but I want to talk a little bit about the EV system as well so the EV system also works a little bit different right uh, imagine Retarmander, right? So that means Gary has a Squirtle. If this was Generation 3, uh, if we actually fight Gary and we kill his Squirtle, right? Or faint him, whatever you want to call it, uh, we would get one Defense Eevee. But in this game, Eevees work a little bit differently. You basically gain Eevees uh, depending on the base stats of the Pokémon you defeated. To give you an example, Mew has 100 base stat for bo for all of the stats. It has 100 base on HP, attack, defense, speed, and special. That would mean that if my Charmander, Zippo, would beat a Mew in a battle, I would gain 100 EVs for all of our stats. Um, if it was like, um, if Mew only had 50 HP and then 100 on the rest, we would get 50 HP EVs and then 100 for the rest. So this, this, this system works differently as well. Um, but and that's not really the the main point. I just want to really to talk about the, that it's different, but it exists. I'm, I'm I was just so blown away that they actually thought about an IV and EV system in Generation One. Uh, they actually thought about making every Pokemon different already at the beginning of Generation One. I didn't know that. I was completely blown away. Um, and yeah, that's pretty cool. So you can have up to sixty five thousand. 535 EVs on every single stat that you have, which also also found like pretty interesting. And I have no idea how that works, but to, to just to, just again to imagine that they put that on a Generation One game, that's pretty crazy. Um, so basically, the other things are mostly just like mechanic wise. I can talk a little bit through it while we're fighting Gary. So basically, psychic types are basically just gods. They they are absolutely broken in this gen, which makes sense to me. Like if you remember the anime. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the beginning, then we can start like a speed up the pace a little bit. So we're gonna against we're, we're gonna go against Squirtle. Look at that scratch. It actually doesn't look that bad, honestly. Um, we're gonna go for a scratch here, but basically spiky types are really broken. And oh my god, critical hit first turn. All right, hopefully that's good luck. Um, but it makes sense. Like if you remember the anime, I don't know, I guess Gen One or Season One. Um. You remember, like, Abracadabra and Alakazam? Like, Psychic is absolutely broken. If a Psychic-type Pokémon uses Confusion or Psychic at you, they're just kind of controlling you, and, like, putting you, like, floating, while they're just controlling you with their mind. Well, like, what, what is the counter to that? Obviously, they later... Um, they later added... Oh my god, we're still gonna die. Things like Dark-type Pokémon to prevent that, but in the anime, like, if you actually think about it, right? How do you counter a, a Pokémon just controlling you with their mind and floating you. <laughs> like, what's the counter to that? There is no counter. So it always made sense to me that, um... When I heard that in Generation 1, psychic type Pokémon were really powerful, it kind of makes sense to me. Uh, obviously in the game, it makes it unbelievably broken, but, but you know... Uh, we're, we're gonna be okay, I, I feel like. So yeah, the psychic types are, like, really broken. The way crits are uh, managed in this game is that, how, depending on how fast your Pokémon is, you have the higher crit rate. So if you imagine, I had an Electrode, which is, I think, the highest the highest speed Pokémon in the game. We would get, like, uh... Do we get healed, by the way? We do. 
I, I, I have no idea what what's happening in this Gen 1 game, right? So I gotta make sure that there's a few things happening, like us healing our Pokémon. But... Uh, like, like I was talking, if we have, like, Electrode, which is the fastest Pokémon in the game, we have, like, a 30% chance, a little bit lower, I think it was, like, 28% chance of critting. It is huge, just because we, we are fast, so... Crits are basically depending of how fast you are, which was I also found really cool. Um, some other stuff that I found out was like, um... Uh, let me think a little bit. Oh yeah, status conditions are really broken. Paralysis, sleep powder, and a, a freeze especially. So, sleep powder lasts from like 2 to 7 turns, and you take a whole turn to wake up. Bulbasaur is too broken, probably. With, with, you get like sleep powder so early, right? I'm guessing it's the same in this Gen 1 game. So, we get sleep powder, which is absolutely broken. Paralyze is also really broken, and Freeze? Oh boy, the only way, apparently the only way you kinda get out of Freeze, uh, of the Freeze status, is by uh, a Pokemon using a Fire-type move on you, or you using like something like Ice Heal. Like, there's no other way. I think there was a third way, but there's no like waiting for the Freeze to not happen. I found that really... Whoa, Freeze is actually broken. <laughs> and then we have, um... Something else is, um... Hyper Beam. I thought this one was really cool. Hyper Beam, that you know, we've always seen something like Hyper Beam in the anime. And Hyper Beam is like this really crazy, uh, strong move. Well, in Gen 1, it does make sense. On the other games, not so much. It's not that good because of the recharge turn. But in Gen 1, if you actually kill a Pokemon with Hyper Beam, you don't you don't have that re recharge turn, which was really broken. Uh, and some just something else I want to mention. This is gonna be the last thing that we can. Uh, move more along and speed up uh, our Nuzlocke is that apparently Pokemon like Victory Bell that has Razor Leaf and Persian that has Slash have like insane crit rates. Um, so they all they like always crit, which is really crazy. So I think there's a lot to look forward to in this Nuzlocke, but I, I was just really excited to talk about a few things because it, it, it just came to look so much fun. I, I saw the mechanics and how goofy and cool broken they were, and I thought, wow. This is cool. So, we don't get- I would have confirmed if you get Pokeballs, and we don't- we do not get Pokeballs from Professor Elk. It's not like, uh, Leaf Green and, and Fire Red. We still do get a map from Daisy, which is pretty cool. But, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, let's go get some Pokeballs before we can start catching some Pokemon, shall we? You have Zip over here. He defeated Squirtle, which is pretty cool. We're gonna be fighting Gary again very soon. Uh, the objective is today is... Maybe going through Borok? There's not much to do until then, so... I think we can actually do it. Uh, we'll see. Uh, first things first, let's go get some Pokeballs and let's get some new encounters. Let's get a few teammates, shall we? Right. So, let's see. Let's buy, um... 15, maybe? Oh my god, that's all our money. Let's do it! We are doing it. Alright, let's go to... Let's go to round one. So, round one. There is a 50% chance for Pidgey and a 50% chance for Rattata. That's it. Let's see what we get. Um, it doesn't really matter too much. We're eventually gonna get both of them. Like, I think you can find them on like, every route. So let's see what we get. Let's see what our first encounter is. And it's a Pidgey. Alright, level 3. Alright. So let's catch this. I'm pretty sure we don't kill. Let's take a look. Okay, that's actually pretty good damage. A crit does kill. This has Gust at level 3. Whoa. That's pretty cool. Oh, this is Switch. So we have Pokemon... On the on the right and items down. Okay, that's pretty cool. There's the town map here. All right, some pretty weird stuff. Our Pokeball. Look at that. That's our Pokeball. And we caught the Pidgey. Nice. <laughs> this is actually so cool. Uh, let's go ahead and add the tiny bird Pokemon. Let's go ahead and nickname this. We are gonna name it Animal. We have lowercase down here. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Well, it's my bad that we have Zippo with big letters, but hey, it's fine. Is there uh, I, I'm guessing- I'm not really sure if they thought about a, a name relearner for Gen 1. I guess I'll find out eventually. But we have our second team member, uh, Animo the Pidgey with 7 attack, 7 defense, 8 speed, and 7 focus. Alright. With that, though, let's go ahead and go to Route 2 now and catch a different Pokemon. I'll just heal, just in case. Alright, and let's go to Route 2. Does this guy not, like, show us how to catch a Pokémon? Oh, that's so cool, you don't have to go through the tutorial again. Alright, that's a little bit nice. Alright, round two. 
New encounter. So, in round two, there is a 15% chance for Weedle, a 45% chance for Pidgey, and a 40% chance for Rattata. Let's see what we get. Ideally, Rattata here would be good. Okay, so this is dupes. Ideally, ideally... Yeah, ideally we get Rattata here. That would be really, really nice. Alright, good. I don't attack. It's level 2. I'll just go for a Pokeball so you can catch it. If not, I'll attack it. I think we can even go to, like, Pidgey. Uh, I'll try another one. Just one more. One. Two. Ugh. Alright. Let's go to Animo. Let's Gust. Oh my god. Alright. Let's go back to Zippo. And let's go to Pokeball. Alright. This should catch. We did a little bit of damage. Should be enough. There we go. We got Ranata. Alright, we're gonna be naming this Scabbers. And it's gonna be our new member. Even thought about- I didn't even thought about a lowercase. This is so cool. Ah. Gen 1. Scabbers. I'm honestly having a lot of fun with this right now. Alright, so this is good. Oh my god, it looks like a Tauros! What is that? It looks like a Tauros. <laughs> I have a very limited, uh, I think, um... Like, Pokemon sprites, right? I think a lot of them are the same, but... I'm fine with that. Let's go ahead and go heal again. And let's go catch a Pokemon in Route 22. So, the good thing about catching Rattata in Route 2 is that now we will get a new Pokemon. Which will be very nice. So, we're either going to be getting... Spiro, Nidoran female, or Nidoran male. I'm really hoping we get a Nidoran. Let's see what we get. Round 22 encounter. Okay, this is dupes. Alright. Okay, another rat attack. Well... There we go, a Spiro. Alright. Level 5. We'll scratch it. That did 6 damage. Crit is 12. Alright, let's go for a Pokeball. I think this is our final member, right? Oh no, we still have a Viridian Forest encounter. One, two, three, nice. Alright, we catch- we caught the Spiro. Uh, Zephyr, another member. Not really sure... Uh, oh, something I know is that, like, normal and rock-type Pokemon are, pro are usually the best. Or the strongest, because of some weird mechanics that I don't remember right now. So we got Zephyr, and we have two birds, <laughs> the same sprite. All right, I'm really, ha I'm really gonna have to remember the names on this one, huh? All right, with that, let's go get our last encounter. Also, find some trainers, yeah? I don't think we're ready though. <laughs> I don't think we're ready. Um, uh, Viridian, the bug catchers don't really have that high of a level Pokemon, but let's see. Let's see if we can- level 4, let's see if we can fight this one. We failed! Oh, it failed! So, oh, this is cool, so... I mean, does Tackle have 100% win rate? I'm not I don't think so. Stats... Can I- can I not look at our moves? Oh. Uh... Stats... There's no way of checking here, okay. That's fine. <laughs> but there's basically something called the 1 in 256 glitch, which means, um... That even if you have a move that has a hundred percent, a hundred percent like hit rate, there's a one in two hundred and fifty-six chance of it missing. I don't think tackles a hundred percent win rate though, uh, or a hundred percent hit rate. I think it's like ninety. Get level seven. So in in Gen three, right? I'm pretty sure Charmander learns Ember at level nine, which is still kind of a long way from now. Um, which is a little bit sad, but hey. Let's go ahead and go a little bit more over here to, like, Viridian Forest and stuff. And let's catch a new Pokemon. Uh, alright. I don't think there's anything useful here, right? There's an item here? No? I can't- no. Isn't there an item usually here? I'm pretty sure there's on red and blue as well. There we go, found an antidote. So, Viridian Forest. New encounter, we have... A 5% chance for Caterpie, a 5% chance for Metapod, a 45% chance for Weedle, a 40% chance for Kakuna, and a 5% chance for Pikachu. Let's see what we get. Alright. Also, a Pokeball here. Damn, that's a big Pokeball. 
Those are our size. That's a pretty cool though. Oh. Actually, for, for the Gen 1 game, this looks not bad at all. This looks pretty darn good. Let's see what encounter is. Probably a Weedle, I'm guessing. There we go. It's a Weedle. Weedle isn't very good, but hey, it's our encounter. So we're gonna catch it. Go Pokeball. Come on. One, two, and three. Oh, it didn't. Alright, let's go for another one. There we go. Okay. So we got Stinger the Weedle. Alright, some... Eventually I'm gonna have to change my name of, of, of Zippo. We'll see how that one goes. Stinger... There's the arm. Alright, so now everything that's left is, like, trainers. Are we ready to fight a few trainers, though? If we only have Zippo, we don't even have Ember yet. I think we kind of need Ember, but I... Uh... Let's fight a little bit, see if we can get Ember, so we can fight the trainers. Shouldn't be that long, especially with, you know, a little bit of speed up. I should go heal, though. Probably need to buy some potions as well, but uh, not right now. I'll do it a little bit later. Right, level 8, so let's... Uh, let's if, if at level 9 we don't learn Ember, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna keep going, I feel like. Alright. I, I don't even have an experience bar, I just noticed that. That's a little bit weird. Right, I can't see my Pokemon. I mean, it's probably in the stats, I'm guessing. No? 3 to level 9. Oh, okay, there we go. It does tell us the number. It just doesn't show the XP bar. So, we get Ember? We do. Okay, now we can actually go to fight the bug catchers and stuff. Also buy, like, a potion, maybe? Actually, no. That's fine. I'm pretty sure there's, like, a hidden item uh, over here. I at least can get the ones I know of on the tree. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I sped up for that. I'm sorry. But, oh, it's, oh well. Right with that, let's go fight some bug catchers and uh, ember them. So the level cap for uh, Bronk is 14. So we're totally fine, I feel like. So, uh, are you a trainer? Nope. All right, you are a trainer. So, can we put this on first? Oh. There we go. Just ember the hell out of these Pokemon. Oh, I forgot to put on set mode. Can we even put set mode? Let's take a look at options. Tech speed fast. Battle animations on. Battle style sad. They even... Oh my god, that's so cool. Okay, we have set mode already. Let's go ahead and keep going. No trainer here. Wow, there's usually a trainer here. Okay, let's keep moving then. Wow, we're not even fighting a Pokemon. What? I mean, I'm pretty sure there's three brain catchers. We only fought one. Oh, look at that music. I'm pretty sure we missed the trainer somewhere. We fought one guy. The, there's three of them. They are There's three bug catchers to fight. Oh, there we go. We just went to north. Okay, I see. So you were gonna be... Weedle, Kakuna... And another Weedle, and yeah, Zippo is just kind of smashing everything with its ember. And look at Kakuna, pretty cool. Kapu I mean, the Kakuna sprite looks sick, he looks really... Oh man, look at that. <laughs> Alright. Alright, let's fight the final trainer, there's probably some items here. There we go, Potion. And the final trainer of uh, Viridian Forest, and there we go, just another ember. Nice and easy. And, uh, yeah. All there's left is basically just fighting Gary. And, um... Then going to challenge the gym. So I think I'm gonna do some grinding off-screen. My Pokemon's probably gonna be a little, bit, a little bit slower than what we did with Zippo. So... Uh, I'm gonna... Let's see... Who am I gonna... Who am I gonna use? Can Zippo take care of that one trainer on Bronx Gym? That would be pretty ideal. I'm not really sure if he can, though. I think I'm not gonna risk it. So, I think what I'm gonna do now is put... The two Pokemon, right? We can only bring two Pokemon to Bronk. We'll put them at level 14 at the level cap. And then the other three... We'll put at level 12. Uh, and we'll fight off Gary. We'll fight off that uh, one trainer in Brock's gym. And then we'll get ready to fight Brock. So a Stinger's definitely going to be evolving into a Beedrill, which is going to be pretty cool. 
I'm gonna take a look at how that animation looks, which I'm gonna... Which is gonna be a lot of fun. And yeah, I'm going to be seeing you in just a little bit. Bye-bye. Alright, welcome back. We have our team a little bit level up. We have Anima with the Pidgey level 12. We got Scabbers at level 12. We got... Uh, so, Rat uh, Ratatan, we have Zephyr, the Spearow at level 12, we have Zippo, the Charmander, level 14, we have Stinger, the Beedrill, the Beedrill ri right now at level 14, so, um, yeah, this is a Beedrill, looks pretty darn cool, honestly, <laughs> but man, Scabbers and Stinger were a pain, they were a nightmare to grind up, but they are ready, so we're back here in, uh, Viridian City, so you can actually go ahead and go fight Geary, in uh, round 22, he has two Pokemon at level 9, so I think uh, our team is pretty prepared. Let's see how it goes. So starting out, he has this level 9 Pidgey that has Gust and Sanitan. We're just going to use our own Sanitan, our own Gust, I mean, and uh, try to take this down. He goes for the Sanitan, a little bit annoying, but should be okay. Let's go for a, let's go for a quick attack here, see how much damage we do. Okay, not bad. Let's go for another quick attack. We hit, and that's pretty much... It's for the Pidgey. Finally, he has another level 9 Pokemon, which is going to be his Squirtle that has uh, Tackle, Tail Whip, and Bubble. So we're just going to go for some more Quick Attacks. I'm actually liking Quick Attacks so far. Let's go for another Gust. Why not? We're faster anyway. This one is level 8, not even level 9. Alright, and we'll go for more Quick Attack. So maybe we're a little bit too leveled up for that. It's Pidgey at 9 and Squirtle at 8. And there it is. That's Gary. So. Pretty easy fight. Now, let's go back to Pewter City. Let's go fight the first trainer uh, that we can find in the gym. Then that talks about uh, Light Years, right? Probably the same guy. Alright, let's see if we can get to the other side. Our encounter rate is pretty darn low. That's what I'm kind of seeing right now, which is not bad at all. That's actually not bad at all. Uh. It's getting a little bit rough to get through this. It just looks it looks weird. It's kind of it's kind of weird for me to know where I am or where I'm going. All right, we're back here in Pewter City. Let's go ahead and heal our team. Now let's go fight the guy inside the gym, and then we can challenge Brock for the first gym badge. All right, let's see what you got. A little eleven Diglett. Let's go for a Gust here, critical hit, and let's go for a quick attack. And Sanshu will go for another Gust. And then he crit us. I'm gonna go to Scabbers. Let's go for another Quick Attack. Another Quick Attack. Uh, let's go Zephyr. And Peck. Peck? Alright, crit. He was like Sand Attacking us or something, I didn't even realize. Alright, with that, let's go challenge the gym. Like I said, we're only allowed to bring two Pokémon. And we are gonna bring the ones that were level 14! Crazy, right? Let's see how this box works, actually. And turn on the PC, someone's PC. Um, deposit. Animal, deposit. You're gonna deposit Scabbers. And deposit Zephyr. So, alright. Change box. Okay, so I want. I was looking a little bit about the boxes because if you actually catch a Pokemon and your box is full, you can't catch a Pokemon or something weird like that. So I'm gonna try to pay attention to that. I think there's 20 Pokemon in each box or something. But yeah, so uh, we're gonna be fighting the gym with Zippo and Stinger, which is an odd combo, right? <laughs> a Fire type and a Bug Pokemon. Uh, fighting the rock type gym, but it's not like we have any better choices and actually in generation one Brock has no rock type moves, which is a little bit crazy. So you have two Pokemon, level camp is 14, I think we're ready to fight. So even though, um, so even though like uh, Charmander is uh, a fire type and doesn't even learn Metal Claw in this generation, uh, he's still probably our uh, Pokemon with, with the highest damaging move. So let's fight Brock. I'm Brock, I'm Peter's gym leader. I believe in rock hard defense and determination. That's why my Pokemon are all the rock type. Do you still want to challenge me? Fine then, show me your best. Alright, our first gym battle. 
This is so much fun. Look at him. Look at him. He doesn't even have a... A shirt on. So he starts with his Geodude. This Geodude is level 12. And only has... Uh, tackle and Defense Girl. Now, something crazy about Gen, uh, Gen 1 is that the gym leader, uh, uh, at least Brock, he has five full heals that he uses for each Pokemon. So in total, he has five for five full heals for Geodude and five full heals for uh, Onyx, which means, you know, status conditions like poisoning with Beedrill and things like that are not an option. Something else pretty cool is that uh, the opponent Pokemon don't have the power points or PP that our Pokemon do. Uh, the NPCs don't have these, the, you know, the 35 out of 35. They have infinite moves they can use. This is pretty interesting because that means that, uh, you know, stall tactics to struggle, things like that, don't work for the NPCs uh, that are our opponents. So we're gonna go for Ember. Now, um, even though Geodude and Onyx have, like, high defense and stuff like that, their special stat isn't very good. This means they actually take a decent chunk of damage from our special attacking Ember. Uh, and obviously with only Tackle and Defense Scroll, this means that if this goes for the Fence Girl, it's not really going to do much for our Ember. And uh, if they go for Tackle, sure, it's going to be a little bit annoying, but... The most important thing is that they don't have rock time moves to actually be super effective against Zippo. Which means even though we don't have the... Um, oh, we even got uh, the Burn, but he's going to full heal. So, like, even though we don't have the Metal Claw, even though we can poison the opponent and stuff like that, it's not like we're doomed just immediately because we did pick Charmander, even though, obviously, it makes it just a little bit more challenging than picking Squirtle or, Squirtle or uh, Bulbasaur. It still means that we can do something. As you can see, we're just kind of demolishing the Geodude, and one more hit is going to do it. He keeps the fence curling or Ember, which isn't the brightest, but this is Gen 1 AI, which works in very, very strange ways. I'm going to talk about that maybe a little bit in the future. And finally, the level 14 Onyx, his final Pokemon. This Onyx has Tackle and Screech. So we're going to go for an Ember here. Let's see if he goes for Screech. Screech is a very, very scary move for his Tackle. So he does go for the... Oh, or no, he was burned. So that's a full heal. All right. I'm gonna go for another Ember here. He wasted his turn on full heal, does he? Right? And he goes for a Screech, but it failed! Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go for another Screech, or another Ember, I mean. The fight is going pretty well. He goes for a Tackle instead of a Screech, so I think we'll just stay. And Zippo is just soloing Brock. Oh man, a, a Charmander just demolishing the Brock's gym. This is a, a good sight to be seen. No Metal Claw needed. And one more, or not one more, like three more Embers. Should do it. He goes for Bide. What? Oh yeah, he has he has Tackle, Screech, and Bide. Oops, my bad. I forgot to read. Uh, it doesn't matter though. We're just gonna go for for Ember, even if he's biting. We we'll just end up killing him. And that's all she wrote. We didn't lose half. We didn't even lose half of our HP on Zippo. But oh well. There we go. We got Leer instead of Metal Claw and stuff like that. Wow, cool. And then defeated Brock. I took you for granted. As proof of your victory, here is the Boulder Badge. There we go, we got our first badge. That's an official Pokemon League badge. It's it it's bearers Pokemon become more powerful. The technique flash can now be used outside of battle, I'm guessing. And yeah, we got a little bit of cash. Wait, take this with you. So you're seeing TM34. TM contains a technique that can be taught to Pokemon. A TM is good only once, so when you use one to teach a new technique, pick the Pokemon carefully. And it contains Bide. Oh, that's kind of useless, no? A Pokemon will absorb damage in battle, then pet you. Yeah. Bide is kind of trash, I feel like. But that is Brock, and I feel like that's going to be the end of our first episode. Well, it's pretty darn cool. I'm having, honestly, a lot of fun with this Nuzlocke. Uh, it's uh, honestly being a little bit faster than I expected because there's like less trainers and stuff to find and uh, Oh, can I not can I not look down just look down? All right, there we go. So um, Yeah, that was pretty cool. We defeated the first jam. I think that's pretty decent progress for now Next episode we will move on maybe try to reach Cerulean City and see what other crazy stuffs are gonna be doing But yeah, that's gonna be it for now if you made it to the end of the video Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you did enjoy it and I will see you next time